everyone. Today I'm going to be featuring what is undoubtedly a gorgeous looking ship, the Lepangbo. Um, this is one of the premium camos you can unlock and once again the art department has put in their best. When it comes to the ship though, um, I'm not really that convinced. We should start with the mostly, well the, the things that the ship is very average at. Health pool is 75.9k which is well, very slightly better than the Alsace, uh, and I'd say it's kind of middle of the pack. You beat something like the Royal Navy, but um, you come just short of the Americans, and you have no chance compared to uh, compared to the IGN line. So, in in terms of health pool, it's very average. It does have a very good torpedo belt. In fact, fully upgraded, the Lepanto torpedo belt is 47%, which is absolutely very impressive for a tier nine battleship. Um, the AA, well, we we can mention the AA briefly. Uh, like all the Italians, uh, the Lepanto has 4.6 km AA, and this is obviously a gigantic weakness to have, because um, the long range, basically the area where you throw out any sort of flak, is 4.6 to 3.5 kilometers, aka 1.1 km area in which you actually throw out any flak. Uh, the problem is. AA doesn't activate instantly. Uh, Wargaming has basically added this kind of delay mechanic where a plane enters or I don't know if they're added or is it just spaghetti coding or is it the whole thing with AA having to reload or whatever. But generally speaking, AA doesn't start shooting instantly. So usually if a carrier comes in to strike you, by the time your AA is shooting, by the time your long range is actually doing any sort of damage, uh, they're already within 3.5 kilometers. They, they cross the gap so quickly that your flak basically hasn't done anything. So the AA defense value, while it's very high in port, is actually quite misleading. It has some decent mid-range, but once again, the major issue really of the Italian AA is the complete lack of range. You're only dealing damage when the planes are already striking you, and they can leave your AA extremely easily as well. So, in terms of AA power, very underwhelming. We should cover the guns though, as we had a very friendly cruiser give us a flat broadside. I am running a Deadeye on the ship. I've been kind of struggling really to figure out how to build this ship. It is kind of a mix of controversies. It, 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 it's like they didn't really know which way they wanted to go with the ship. The armor on it is actually very, very good. Um, okay, you're gonna see AP versus SAP comparison here in terms of damage dealt to a destroyer. But uh, the armor is actually extremely good when it comes to nosing angled sort of tanking. You have an icebreaker that is strong, it's 60 to 80 millimeters, it comes fairly high up on the nose, so it does protect the front of your citadel. You have a 55 millimeter deck armor, which is quite resilient against um, sap from Italian cruisers, and it's very resilient against heavy HE that usually has about 50 51 millimeters of pen. Your upper belt is also 70 millimeters. So, once again, besides the superstructure and the tip of the nose, nose in, you are quite a tanky ship. Now, the ship does have a turtle back, and be, during development, it was actually able to brawl quite nicely. But Wargaming went out of their way to actually nerf the slopes of your citadel, making the citadel armor deck slopes 25mm instead of what it was previously. What this means is that if a battleship shoots your broadside, your turtleback doesn't actually work because the shells you know, get the overmatch mechanic, which means they can still citadel you. So Lepanto can be citadeled extremely easily. Um, if you, well, not extremely easily, the citadel doesn't come that high above the water, but you're absolutely vulnerable to being citadel, which obviously means you don't really want to push in and brawl. Um, on the other hand, the accuracy on the ship is extremely poor. It's 1.6 Sigma, which is terrible. The, the only one that has equally poor uh, Sigma at tier 9 is the Alsace. So you're kind of sharing with the Alsace. You have the same gun count, you have the same poor Sigma. But it is a weakness. Sometimes you land some good hits, but especially in situations like this, I'm only really rushing in because I expect this Kitakaze, well I saw him use his torpedoes, so I'm trying to basically box him in and kill him off. But the combination of this Sigma combined with the fact that Sap is capped in terms of damage, which means Sap can only deal 10% of damage to destroyers. So what this means is that you have no real way of dealing any sort of huge damage to DDs. 
load the difference between loading AP and loading SEP is 50 damage per shell, which isn't exactly impressive. Like, instead of doing 1.2k with an AP overpen, by loading SEP you do 1250. So, you don't really have that oomph, you don't have that hard hitting damage against any sort of DDs, which, in general, if you want to push in in a battleship, uh, and you want to play aggressive, there's generally always DDs and you generally want to be able to load um, some sort of firepower to, to neutralize them. So you completely lack that option. And keep in mind that SEP of course doesn't start fires and there's no splash damage so it doesn't break modules the same way as HE does. So against DDs you are surprisingly weak. Um, the other issue really is that, well, your secondaries are uh, incredibly garbage. And I mean incredibly garbage, because one, just like the AA, the secondaries are 90mm guns. And, well, they're dual purpose, 90mm. In fact, the majority of your secondaries out of, you have what, 40 secondaries? Out of these, uh, sorry, you have 42 secondaries. Out of these, 24 are the 90mm secondaries. And the 90mm secondaries are especially poor. Because even though they reload fast, well, 4 seconds, fairly fast, um, they only pin 50 millimeters of armor. 15! Even if you spec IFHE, you can only bump this up to 18, and obviously, that's these thresholds are garbage. 15 millimeters is so poor that you can't even pin the armor of enemy destroyers. Your secondaries, the majority of your secondaries, do not pin the armor of enemy destroyers. In fact, they can't even pin the superstructure of enemy battleships. That's how poor it is. The superstructure of enemy battleship is 19, and in fact, the superstructure of most cruisers is 16 millimeters on, on any sort of heavy cruiser. So the secondaries are so bad that you cannot even pin the superstructure of cruisers. The only thing that you can really pin is destroyer superstructures. So the secondaries are basically a whole different level of garbage that we haven't seen in the game so far. So any sort of secondary build is obviously out of out of the game. So you can't really brawl because of the citadel weakness and you can't really push up if there's any DDs because you struggle to do anything to DDs. Your secondaries can't pen them, um, your sap doesn't really do any sort of damage, you can't even break their modules, they can't break their torpedo tubes or anything. So you're, you're extremely poor at playing in any way aggressive. Here's an example of that AA by the way, you see it throws up one sec section of flak and then he's already within my AA. Luckily the Kaga fighter planes aggro and kind of shred those planes. But uh, don't expect to defend against any sort of tier 10 CV, they will eat you easily, easily alive. But but anyway, uh, so basically against DDs, you, you don't really have any tools whatsoever. Now, most battleships are already weak against DDs, but the Italians are especially weak against destroyers. It's not like it has any special speed going for it either, just like in terms of health pool, it is very, very average. Uh, I think I mentioned that. So, how exactly do you play this ship? Well, <laughs> that's when it becomes really awkward. Because, well, you'd like to push nose in and be kind of in mid-range, maybe? That was a, that was an option I was playing around with. Like, but Because, once again, the range of the ship is actually extremely poor. This is one of the things that it really, really reduces out of, and that is gun firing range. The thing has, what, 18 point something base range? Uh, it was 18.1 kilometer base range. Which means if you don't have Sansonetti and pick up a kill, you're not going to be hitting anything, or you're not going to be reaching anything whatsoever. And 18.1 is by, by far the worst. In comparison, even the Russians have 19.4 km range at tier 9. And then, of course, uh, the Americans have a 23, and then the Japanese have something like, what? 21, 20 something. Basically, they all, all, all the other ones are, except the Russians are breaking 20 kilometers, you're stuck at 18 kilometers, which means spotter plane is basically your best friend in this ship. And in the current meta of people playing extremely far back, that's not exactly enjoyable. I do, but in this build right here, I'm running Deadeye, mostly because the 1.6 Sigma is so painful to deal with. It's more than that, though. Um, the AP pen on the guns, well... It's 381mm guns, so once again, you're not overmatching even 27mm of plating, which means even heavy cruisers like Baltimore at tier 8 can sit nose in against you, and you can't do anything. You can't even load HE against them, uh, because you don't have HE. So, be prepared to, like, fight, fighting something like an Alaska in this thing is not fun, because you can't burn him, uh, and you can't overmatch him, and he just kind of bullies you. Not exactly the best experience ever. So, 
it, it really is extremely it doesn't have a lot of flexibility it doesn't have a lot of versatility uh and i, I was speaking of not just the pen and uh, and uh the pen and the poor accuracy, but um, only being able to beat the Alsace in penetration is extremely underwhelming. But it's also the fact that they nerfed the reload. They really, really nerfed the reload. And uh, well, we can compare the Alsace that also has 12 guns. The Alsace is balanced by having 32 seconds of reload to make up for this. 12 guns, 32 seconds of reload. Okay. Um, that's usually what most tier 9 ships have. Georgia is special. It's got 26 second reload. Shanbart has 26. This is because they have very few guns. And then you got um, ships like uh, Iowa and Musashi and uh, Izumo. These have 30 second reload because they got 9 guns and they're big guns. So Alsace is 32 seconds to make up for the 12 guns. But this thing, this thing has 37 seconds of reload. Okay. Not 32, 37. So the reload is 5 seconds longer than on the Alsace. This, of course, also makes it very, very tricky to try to push in and do any sort of brawling because every time you shoot, you're waiting more than half a minute. I'm running the reload module, um, which is why I'm able to shoot something like every 33 seconds and then with AR kicking in, we have something like, well, let's actually look at my reload when I shoot it. We have something like a 30 second reload. This is with full reload build and half HP with AR kicking in we have reached normal tier 9 battleship reload but add in things like the 1.6 uh, 1.6 sigma and the damage output well it's not exactly impressive is it i haven't touched upon the smoke and that's because the smoke is also very niche you saw me use it after i pushed in and killed the katakaze i smoked up to disengage and that's really most of the time what you're going to be ending up using the smoke for because the smoke firing penalty when smoking up is 15.8 kilometers. So you saw that just as the Pomern went to 15.9, I got undetected because uh, I left the firing range. So most of the time using this smoke, I use it to make full broadside turns that I wouldn't normally really be able to pull off. Uh, I use it when I try to push in somewhere, I use it to try to disengage. There has been extremely few cases where I've actually been able to play aggressive. That is basically something like a Soviet battleship is sitting nose in and I pop my smoke and I charge him. And for some reason he doesn't react, he doesn't reverse. And none of his teammates help him in any way. And I'm able to pull off a drive-by um, or get close enough that I can basically surprise him with a drive-by. But those situations are so extremely rare because once again, when you pop the smoke, uh, if you pop it anywhere near the enemies, then you have one minute of not shooting if you actually want to utilize the smoke smoke because you can't shoot the second you shoot like this um, you your smoke firing penalty exposes you so the smoke is really it's an escape tool that that is that is the tldr it is fundamentally just another way of escaping on, on a big cooldown it allows you to make these full broadside turns and only provided you haven't been shooting so your bloom doesn't expose you and only provided there's absolutely no radars or hydros or anything around which would otherwise completely ruin your day so it's a very niche um, niche tool for repositioning. It's not exactly that uh, amazing. You note that I probably ha I haven't been shooting much sap either. That's of course the other gimmick of the Italian line and that is uh, semi-armor piercing. The problem is, unlike with cruisers, uh, the cruisers in the Italian line where you can pinpoint specific positions on ships and you can accurately deal out a lot of damage um, So the sap actually does a lot of damage it pumps out some great DPM on the likes of Venezia and so forth uh, this ship can't really do that because the dispersion is so poor and most of the time you're not you're shattering on various you're shattering on turrets you're shattering on upper belts uh, you, you i've i've really have found sap to be extremely underwhelming especially since you don't do any extra damage to destroyers i find myself loading sap less and less the more i play these ships in fact this this lap of the game i basically besides shooting the dd with a bit of sap honestly mostly for demonstration purposes i've just been running around with ap it's obviously not perfectly optimal more optimal would be uh, using the correct ammunition at all times but that's not so easy to do either because the reload is so huge 37 seconds if you're running expert loader okay yay you you cut that down to still um what something like 17 18 seconds for ammunition switching even with sansonetti we're talking like almost 10 seconds of ammunition switching and not everyone has luigi sansonetti and not everyone can afford to put it on the italian bbs because they're running it on the italian cruisers so 
the whole gimmick of switching with a ship that has this kind of gigantic reload is really hard to justify. Two shatters on the Colorado really showcases the fact that your penetration, something like an Izuma could have easily citadel that, um, but it really just showcases that in terms of penetration, you're only really outpacing the Alsace. You're not outpacing um, anyone else in the tier 9 battleship competition. So, pff, what is there? I mean, the e I don't really like the ships, honestly. I, I generally hate ships. Hey, there we go. He turned in and we managed to punch through. One of them shattered on the torpedo, but we managed to get a citadel. Now we get rapid fire, which means we actually have pretty good reload. But, of course, the game is already over. This is with Sansanetti. But what I was saying is uh, the entire line, it seems like they can't really decide what they want with the ship. Um, in some sort of ideal world, you could play it as kind of a Kremlin-esque, you know, nose-in uh, tank and um, just kind of push and bully and so forth. But there's so many things that make it difficult. The secondaries are garbage, which means a DD has such an easy time YOLOing you, because once again, you don't have HE. So, you're such, like, a DD can literally rush you nose-in, and you're basically stuck shooting AP and ineffective secondaries at him, and there's nothing you can do to stop him except your team saving you. So... You, that's one major reason to not push in. The second is your AA is garbage, so that's another reason you don't really want to push in. Uh, then the fact that these guns are 381 millimeters and you don't have access to HE means that, well, you don't overmatch anything. In fact, a Baltimore can just sit nose in and tank you basically for 10 minutes and probably honestly I'll trade you, I'm not sure about that one, but let's just say that not having any overmatch and not having any secondaries is such an underwhelming experience. In fact, if you look carefully at the secondaries, you see the small shells, the small white, the big shells are the 152mm guns. Those things actually deal damage. But the small shells, those are the 90mm secondaries. And when you see those actually hit his ship, you'll notice that they're not actually dealing any damage. That's the big ones, and then here comes this, all the small guns. The small guns the, basically the white light shells, they just shatter on even a tier 8 carrier hull because they don't have any penetration. They are completely useless. They're supposed to start fires, but even that is such an underwhelming value. So, uh, I'm, honestly, I'm, I'm extremely worried. I'm getting the vibe. I'm trying to get a secondary kill here, but it's not exactly easy with these secondaries. But I'm really worried that what they're basically pulling here with this line is they make an entire line of what I can only describe as honestly fairly underwhelming battleships. And then the tier 10, as far as I understood, the impressions that I've gotten of the tier 10, I haven't played it myself, is that it is quite, quite strong. So they're, they're basically... They're doing the same thing they did with the American BBs, which is that the Kansas and Minnesota is basically trash. And then on the other hand, the Vermont is quite a powerful ship. And uh, I, I hope it isn't that way, but honestly, that is the impression I'm getting. Because they did go out of their way to nerf these ships just before release. Uh, they nerfed the reload across the board on all of them. And I don't particularly like any of them. Um... The, you get the smoke at tier 9, which means the Le Lepanto can at least disengage at times, but the, the sap being so useless against destroyers and sap just generally being so useless, the, disper the, the major balancing factor, like they, they balance this in the worst way, the, the way I hate the most, and that is they balanced the ship by nerfing the reload and nerfing the accuracy. So you're shooting with long intervals, and then when you're shooting, you're not actually hitting much either. That's their way of balancing the ship, and I hate that kind of balance. I would happily trade a bit of armor to just get more consistent guns. I, I would enjoy that more, because if there's one thing I hate about battleships, it's just RNG, RNG, RNG. Uh, in fact, I can I can post a clip in, in, in I can pin a clip in the, in the commentary below, or in the comments below, Well, you, well, you see me using the uh, Caracciolo, I think, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I'm using the Caracciola and I'm shooting a Sinop. We're using my two front guns. And you can see the way the dispersion on the Italian BBs look at its worst. And it's it's honestly, it's sometimes just hilarious how terrible it is. Um, this was a 224k damage game. Six Citadels. So, um, Shores providing three of them. And But this was, of course, if you look at the team score, this was a top tier game. This was... Uh, basically perfect game for for a tier 9 battleship if you get tier 7 matchmaking in a tier 9 bb you're expected to carry basically re regardless of battleship uh, i've got some decent performances out of the lepanto but 
I, I think that the ship just struggles from an identity crisis. The guns and the secondaries prevent it from being a, an effective pushing battleship, uh, whereas the lack of range and the accuracy prevents it from being an effective mid to long range ship. So it kind of flounders in between mid, close range, whatever, um, trying to find its role, but not really excelling at anything. Generally, not really much. The, the sap, and the, the, honestly, the biggest issue is that the supposed gimmicks of the line, which is the sap and the smoke, um, I find them largely I irrelevant to the way I play these ships. I find them largely irrelevant. In fact, having sap feels like a weakness. I would rather have HE, because with HE I can play more aggressive. Um, and um, the smoke, well, the smoke firing penalty is so gigantic that it's just another way of running away. Which is nice, because I can play aggressive and then use it to run away if the push fails, provided they don't have smoke or whatever. But besides that, it's... The, the gimmicks are just that. They're, they're kind of just gimmicks, and ultimately it feels like a tankier Alsace with less DPM. Yay. Um, detail report-wise, mostly shot. Um, mostly shot AP, of course, a couple of H uh, sap shells. Not really the most impressive damage on that one. The secondaries are, of course, amusing. 435 shells fired with 25% accuracy, and of, of, of those 111 shells, most were, of course, on the Shokaku, which is an incredibly lightly armored ship, and we still basically shattered the vast majority of the secondaries. They are a whole different level of garbage that I haven't seen before. Damage taken, though, good resistance against the HE. Um, 43 shells, only 11k damage. It is very good at tanking nose in HE and generally nose in AP as well. It is a, when angled, it is a very, very tanky ship. So it does have that going for it. The torpedo belt is also excellent. But overall, is, is, is this some sort of sh ship that I would recommend right now free XPing or dumping the blue and zone or some sort of must have a ship? No. Honestly, no, not really. Uh, I think uh, if I want to play long range, I think the Izuma is a better experience. If I want to play a fast flanker, um, there is the Georgias, there is even the Alsace just. And uh, if I want to push in any sort of aggression, then why not just play a Sovetsky Soyuz? But overall, we shall see what the tier 10 brings us. Because once again, I, I, I suspect they're doing the good old make the entire line eh, and then make a very powerful tier 10 to encourage you guys using up that free XP and those doubloons. I can show you guys my current build on the ship as well. All right, well, I can start by showing you the armor layout. As mentioned, the armor is very strong with no sin. It's got a nice icebreaker, it's got nice upper belt and deck armor, and the turrets, well, I have had them somewhat disabled, but they seem relatively tanky. So nosing the ship is actually very resilient. It's when you have to give broadside when there's a fair bit of issues. It looks like a standard turtleback, which one would hope would be a really good thing, but Wargaming did in a devlog mention that they nerfed the slopes of the Citadel. So these are 25 millimeters, which means 380 millimeter guns and above can overmatch your Citadel. So that means, of course, that the turtleback isn't really that effective at all. The Citadel is, however, low. It's not below the water, but it is fairly low. So you can get away with giving broadsides, but generally that's more luck than anything else. I have seen some really nasty volleys of battleships getting multiple citadels on the ship across the map, so uh, don't expect any sort of miracles from uh, this turtleback. The second thing is, of course, these hilarious secondaries, which is the 90 millimeters Proiettili HE. And you can see the HE shell armor, cap uh, shell, shell armor penetration capacity, and it's 15 millimeters. And even if you spec IFHE, you can only bump that up to 18 millimeters. And this is, of course, <laughs> especially garbage because, uh, as mentioned, most DDs sail around with 19 millimeters of plating. Some of them actually have more. So these things will literally shatter your HE secondaries. In fact, most heavy cruisers have uh, 16 millimeters of superstructure plating. So even cruisers uh, superstructure will shatter that HE and battleships of course have 19 millimeters. So even if you spec IFHE on those, you can't even pen the superstructure of enemy battleships. You can't even pen DDs with IFHE. So 
These Lepanto secondaries are basically fireworks. I guess you could make the argument that maybe you could use them for fire starting, but with a four second reload and 5% fire chance, they're, they're, not, they're not exactly um, amazing to say the least. I mean, Alsace has 12x200 millimeters that have a three second reload, a second faster reload. So yeah, uh, 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 the Lepanto secondaries are not particularly fantastic. The AA defense, as mentioned, basically the long range flak is where the long range is where the flak happens, and as you can see, the action zone is 3.5 to 4.6, so it's a 1 km gap, and planes don't have much of an issue just crossing past that. Generally, before you have really done anything with the AA at all, and concealment wise, we can see the smoke function concealment 15.8 kilometers, which means, of course, very much a defensive tool because if you shoot, your smoke is useless. Anyway, equipment wise. Um, I am running the turret survival, additional tankiness, it synergizes well with the torpedo belt since it already is very very tanky. Better dispersion, honestly I don't know what else you would run here, better dispersion is basically a must have because of how poor the 1.6 sigma is. Uh, additional tankiness because that's what the ship kind of does well. Concealment 13.4 is pretty nice and we do want to enhance that. And finally faster reload, we have to have faster reload because even with this the reload is 32.6. Without this of course we are sitting at a pretty pretty staggering uh, 37 second base reload and honestly no one wants that. It, it's such a weird thing with the re they give it really fast turret reverse. You see that 25 second base turret traverse that, that that sounds like something that would make for a great brawler but then they give you no way of ur matching and then they give you that vulnerable turtle back it's like they tell you to go brawl with the turret traverse and then they nerf the armor <laughs> it's like okay well i guess we're not and then they give you a huge reload as well you, do you really want to brawl with a ship with hat that can't ur match has no secondary power has no he um it doesn't have a working turtle bike. It's like, it, I'm not really sure what what they were going for. And that's, I feel like there were two different dev teams working on their ships. And one thing, one dev team wanted them to do one thing. And the other thing, other team wanted them to do the other thing. And you end up with this clash of, clash of ideas that doesn't make any sense. Um, regardless though, 18.1 base range as seen there. Uh, obviously, run the spotter plane. Fighter plane is not just useless, but Le Lepanto really needs that increased range. And captain build wise, I do run the standard dead eye build mostly because, well, if you actually want to hit something in this thing, then yeah, you want dead eye. If you have a Sansonetti, he's obviously the best. You got me, you saw me unlock far reach, the 8% range fits this ship extremely well. You saw me get to rapid fire, faster reload with a Confederate skill, and you can even. Can you get this one uh, unlikely to get concealed reserves ever because of 100 hits and this thing well that will take some work i guess you i don't know if you can uh, anyway build wise is very standard expert loader if you got sansonetti even i mean it's i wouldn't say it's actually that important on the italians because you can just run around shooting ap it's it's fine uh, faster turret verse, really not that important because it already has a really fast turret verse. But priority target is nice, primitive maintenance is nice. You do want AR and you do want to build. I would say if you're going to play any sort of brawly way, get fire prevention first, followed by concealment, followed by dead eye. If you actually want to hit something, then you need to get concealment and dead eye ASAP. Once again, not a whole lot of variety here, but uh, you can thank the captain rework for that. Uh, I would like to see some, I would love, love to run some Ohio type of builds where you run long range and then you run secondary for faster reload because the ship really needs faster reload. But something like an Ohio pushing in, it's got that secondary firepower, it's got that fast reloading heal, uh, and it's got that ore matching guns. All of this synergizes really well with a pushing ship and this thing doesn't really have any of that. So once again, it, it's like... It's like this, this ship is just a clash of ideas and I don't really understand what they wanted with the entire line. Um, hard sell for me right now. I, I don't feel like this ship really does anything I couldn't do better in many other tier 9 battleships. It is extremely pretty though. I will give it that. If you do unlock this camo, I mean the art department, good lord, they have been absolutely gorgeous once again. So if nothing else, at least the looks are fantastic. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my take on the Lepanto. And as always, if you do drop a sub, I do appreciate it since it lets me know that, hey, 
people actually enjoy the content. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time. Have a great rest of the day.